how's it going? And welcome back to something about rails. Now it's been a little while since we last recorded on here. I've been over on Manufactrio playing a bit on there and that's been really exciting. Plus I've had a few trips around which has delayed my production a little bit. In that time however, I have written up the code which will do the really cool transport stuff using open computers and railcraft. And we're going to use it in this episode today to finish off the power and to get our empowered oil over to the power station. And also to get the canola and the canola seeds back to here. So, let's get started. Okay, so we're over here by the yard slash depot where I've set up a basic layout just so we can see a little easier what we're planning on doing and how we're going to do it. And you can see I've set up track and I have set up some computers and there are three stations here. There's the trees one here which is going to provide some for more item. We've got our mid station here and we've got our final destination over here which is going to be the requester. Now with this code we can mix and match all the stations together as long as they're all connected and you have the main dispatch program it'll send trains around to do whatever we want. Now I've broken this up into two sections. The first piece is just the stations themselves uh, which are the, requ the requesters and the providers. What we're going to do though is we're going to set up a station. Hopefully it's reasonably easy to do. And of course in our case we're this will probably be one of the stations that will provide charcoal or canola or even the empowered oil. So we're going to put down however a, probably just a computer. Now I'm going to use creative computers here. Obviously we will be using normal power computers later on and these stations themselves don't need to be too grunty so we're just going to put down um, a screen with a computer we're going to put a transposer here now your transposers do need to be next to any chest or storage they don't have to be a chest they could be storage or any form as long as they can read what's in the chest you should be fine and you can have multiple, and we'll have a look at an example in a second of that. We're just going to run a power, another cable along here to connect that up. Uh, and we're now going to put a keyboard probably on the side of there. And of course that's the basic setup we need. As long as we've got this guy here, it really doesn't matter what else you have. But you do need to have a transposer to read what the contents is. We're going to put in here just a very basic amount of memory. 1.5 should be enough to let us do an, L, an LS of a directory, uh, but nothing else really needed. Standard EEPROM, creative CPU, uh, which has got the graphics built into it. Uh, you can use anything. We don't even need to really have a screen if you don't want it. And we will need a hard drive. This one here I've already pre-installed with OpenOS, but it's just the same process as normal. Go into the machine, turn it on, install and away we go and of course the network card so that we can talk to the other devices here we're going to connect all these up uh, so we'll run a cable along into the relays here now these relays are already scattered across the various parts of the network just so that they separate out network wise the um, different components because we don't want this computer to be able to talk to another computer uh, because it will get confused and say too many components can't run So we separate them off from the relay and I've also got power distributors as well So that we can se we can separate the power out and they don't connect at all uh, But because we're using creative we don't need to worry about the power And we should now be ready to go. So if we turn this on It will boot up And there should be nothing on here currently Nope, just the standard sh.rc. We go in and we create a file called station.lua. And I grab a copy of the code. And we'll paste the code into here. There is a couple of things you need to change inside each station. Just so it will run. Uh, so we'll take a quick look at that. And that's the reason why I'm using computers. 
because they're easy to change and you can get a little bit of feedback if you need them. But you can see I've just got some description and this code will be available on GitHub in the normal location. Uh, but you can, of course, if you don't know where that is, check down in the description and there will be a link to it. Uh, but what we need to do is change the station name, change what we're requesting, make sure we're connected to the transposer and start the code up. If we go down here, there's a little configuration section. Currently, I've got it set to test one, uh, but we're going to call this a Teres, which of course is the name of our station, and it's what's set up in the switching routers over there. Our uh, routing books, which say if the destination is Teres, go uh, towards here. If it's a mid station, go down there, and yeah. Uh, so that's the how to get to the station. The other thing we need is the requests. So this is already pretty much set up for what we need it in the long run. But you can see I've got empowered oil set here because it will take liquids. And it's the amount that you want. So let's just say this station doesn't require oops. Doesn't require anything. It's not gonna request anything. We're just gonna comment all that out. We'll save it, close it, and we're ready to go. We run it. And now this station is set up. These other stations are exactly the same. We'll just hook it in here. You'll see that there's just under two stacks of coal in this chest. Over here, we have the same type of thing where we have 10 coal, 32 canola in that chest. And you'll see that we have another, we have two transposers connected up the same machine. So what this will do is it will read both of these. You can have another chest here if you wanted to. As long as it's connected, these guys will scan all around them and go for every single transpose that's connected. So there was 32 and 10 in there. Jump over here, we've got 64 canola seeds and another stack of canola. And if we go over to this guy here, which is just the machine for it, we go edit station, which I've already pre-installed. You'll see that here, the station name, it's mid station, which once again is what the routing books will send in this way. We scroll down here a little bit more. We've got a request for coal, and we're requesting 132 coal. Now there is a minimum requirement of 128 that's set on the dispatcher code itself, uh, which means that we're not always sending stuff around. So in this case here, we will request 132. Because we've already got those 10, we're only requiring 122. So this station won't get anything else because it's already got its minimum requirement that it needs. And we'll do the same over here. So we're just going to check in here. This is our requester so that's where all our stuff will be going to and it's pretty much similar to in the last episode would require canola and the seeds that's what we're requesting here we jump over here oops no, that's not what we want we go down to our station name remembering of course this is the final station so it's got final as the station name. Once again, based on routing books and how to get here. And at this one here, we have three things requested. Obviously this line is commented out, so we were ignoring that one. This one here is requesting actually additions item music 13. Because we need to use the raw item name. Actually additions item canola seed colon zero and some more coal. 129 coal, so it's just above that 128 threshold. Now, as I said, we need to know what the raw name is. So, if you look here, you can see in the grey text underneath the canola seeds, the lighter grey text, it says Acne Editions Item Canola Seed. Um, but if you look at canola, on the other hand, it's Acne Editions colon Item Music, which isn't really very descriptive, but that's what it's known in behind the scenes, and so that's what we're looking for. And you'll also notice up at the top, it's got canola, and then hash 4196 slash 13. So there's our colon 0 and our colon 13. 
So we go over there, we will run a station. And that's ready to go. It's actually broadcasting out to see if it can find the dispatcher, which we're about to work on. So this computer all by itself, it's not connected to anything. It's sitting on a network port or a, a relay, so it's not connected to any other machine. Uh, this will end up being in one of the racks, probably in the depot area there. It's not connected to it, doesn't have anything attached to it. This is just the dispatcher. This is the one, this is the brains behind this whole operation. We go into here. This is once again, empty hard drive. It is a bit more powerful because it does have to do more stuff. So we've got a little more memory and we'll probably have a bit more powerful CPU because we need this to process a lot more. But otherwise, it's the same as everything else. And the screen's a bit, a bit more fancy. Just so we've got, because this one's got a bit of display on what it does. But we're going to go into here, edit dispatcher, dispatcher, dot lua. And let me grab the code for that and paste it in. It may take a couple because it's quite a bit of code. Of course, you could download it off the thing and use wget or an internet card and wget or can install it on another machine. It's up to you. But let me copy the code in and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so that's all the code written for that. This one here is pretty much ready to go. You don't have to change much unless you are wanting to change the way it operates. Now it is designed to run with the standard depot code that we've already set up. So it will request a new train when it needs one. Uh, currently though I've set it up, because we're actually not connected, the only train we've got currently is that guy there. Uh, it is currently set up just to have one train, which has been predetermined in the code. Which you can do if you wanted to do that. The only thing you would have to change is this here, set it to max trains equals zero. And then it won't use any of the depot, you have to predefine what trains do what. You will see there's some other pieces of code that work with that, like the logistics chest 2 here. The logistics tank 2 is what we're requesting. But that's it. There's nothing else in this file. Go to dispatch. You get a nice pretty interface. So you can see I've already set up 45, which is our little yellow guy over there. And he's set up as a goods train. You can see that the station are now checking in. Now that they've actually found the dispatcher. They've sent through all the requests. So Trees, of course, was requesting nothing. The final station is requesting a canola seeds, 256 of them. Coal, 129. Uh, and it's the canola itself at 256. And this station has requested 122 coal. Now you remember we requested 132, but because there's already 10 in there, it's only requesting 122. Now it's shown on here. But it will never, it won't be provided because it's underneath that minimum request amount. Now I might change some of this interface later on so that we've got more room to work with or we don't show certain items or it's got some color in it. But for now, this works. Now if we go over to here though, and we say, okay, let's stick in here. Uh, so let's got 64. We would have stick in another 32. Plus, it's 32 in there, yep. We head over here. It will take a little while to check in. Because it's not designed to run on a regular basis. It will just check in regularly, send back some statuses, and the dispatcher will go, Oh, cool, there's some stuff to be delivered, and send the train off. And there you go. Oh, there's a bit of a graphical glitch there. But you can see there are 40, uh, 45G, which is our uh, goods train, the yellow one that we set up. Uh, it's been asked to pick up the canola from mid-station and deliver it to final. So that's the actual dispatcher itself. And you'll also know it would just sit there and do nothing. Because the next part that we have to work on will work on the actual giving the orders to the trains. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that ready and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've set up the next piece. You'll notice that we have something you may recognize from a previous episode. 
Although it was a little bit different at that point. This, what we've got on each of the stations now, is our cart detector, or our engine colour detector, which we were using over there. Uh, although I have learned a few things since then. One, use carpet. Now, you don't actually need the carpet or the wires. The carpet just makes it easy to copy because it is a vanilla item. And the other thing I've done here is these were previously routing detectors. Uh, but I found out if you use locomotive detectors, they do exactly the same thing. You can put your primary color in here. You need to use a dye, of course. Primary color and your secondary color. If you only specify secondary, it'll only match on that. And if you only specify primary, it'll match on that. So, of course, white for the secondary and white for the primary. And the same thing, of course, the whole way down. Orange, orange, magenta, magenta, light blue, yellow. And, of course, this will let us detect what the, the engine going past is. And we've got the detector here. Now, one thing we do need to do, however, is place down something that can read this signal. You'll see currently there is nothing there. And what we're going to do is we'll head over here. Where I have placed down a electronics assembler. And we're going to put the um, a tier 1 microcontroller. It doesn't need to be very powerful because it only needs to read that the signal coming in and know what trains are going past because this this here is going to be the magic we don't actually know when a train arrives at a station but we do know when a train goes past one of these router things that we've set up so we're going to use this to determine when a train's arrived and to be able to tell it where it's going to next we're also going to set up a, a redstone a card we're going to use a transposer because the transpose is going to be able to pull golden tickets out and stick them into the train. Much like we're doing with the, the yard and the depot, like trailing things where to go. We're going to give a CPU. Doesn't need to have much. Just needs to be fast enough that it picks up the... Can get in there and out there pretty quick, which doesn't take much. Uh, some memory. And a, a network card so we can talk to the other devices on the network. And the last thing we'll need, of course, is our EEPROM, which at this time is blank. But if we jump over to the dispatcher here, I've already put in the code called for the logistics router. And this is the one that is going to do most of the talking. It'll grab signals from the dispatcher to tell it where to send trains to. Now, in theory, you shouldn't need to make any changes to this. This is designed for an EEPROM, so it can automatically detect where things are. So it also has to be quite small. But if we go as normal flash... Oh, actually, now we need to put... I'm going to quickly take out this EEPROM and stick that one in there instead. Uh, logistics router. We'll go, yes. I always seem to do that the wrong way around. Uh, we'll go logistics router. So you can identify it later. Quickly go back here, take that out, which will now be named, put that into there. Head over to uh, this gear. Put that into there. Now I'm doing a creative, so it's instant disable. We get ourselves a microcontroller. Awesome. Now I have run, you might notice there was a creative battery in my inventory. That's because I put a creative here. And with a power cover there, so I can supply all these guys with a bit of uh, power. Because they do need power. Oh, especially since I'm not using creative. I've written this generic enough that we don't need to make a new one every time. We can just copy and paste. So, of course, if you're doing a survival, we would need multiple. But in our creative world, we can just copy and paste easier. So we're going to put this guy here. Now, on the old system... It would connect up with network cable. I'll just go down there and show you in a second. Put a bit of cable on there and we need the grab. I forgot to grab the detector track. Tor track. Put that in there. Hit it with a wrench. Face it the way. It doesn't really matter, I suppose. If we go down here, though, 
One of the things we need to be able to do is take golden tickets out and stick them into the thing. Now, by default, there's not a lot of room to move. You've got a power cable here. I'm sorry, a network cable there. We've got the redstone signal coming on this side and that side, and of course we've got the two tracks. Now you think, that's fine. Let's put a chest over there. Doesn't work. Can't put track on a, on a chest. But what I did find out though, is we can put something there. And that is a, from Open Computers, which is even better, because it will transmit the power and network signal through. We can place a capacitor, which is a battery. Put that onto there, we can then put a track on top, like that, perfect. And then down here, we take this piece out, we're going to run this cable. Uh, this cable is down along here. And then we should be able to take this guy out, because it doesn't need to connect, because he's connected to there. And we're going to place down a chest. Now, just remember that once you place down most normal chests, you can't open it. But I found that the, the Bibliocraft frame chests, place it down, will let us access it, which is quite cool. And now, when the train goes over, we can detect which train it is. So in our case of our yellow one over there, it'll be yellow yellow. It'll go over the battery, might be a problem. Detect it here. This guy is going to then say, okay, you are now heading to dispatch or to another station. And it'll be able to insert the golden tickets. Which reminds me, we need to make some golden tickets. So golden tickets. These guys here. And of course, this is where we need to use our names. So we've got our trees station, the mid station, and the final over there. Now one thing I did find out, which I was really happy about, is we can go into here and we can call this final. Done. We can go into anvil, and we can rename them. It does cost a little bit of experience, and it'd be really cool if I could automate this, because there's some other cool things I could do if I could automate it, but I can't find a way of doing that. But if we do that, it's now called Final. And the computer programs can actually read what they are, which makes the whole selecting from a certain slot much easier, because we can just read what's in the chest. And obviously every station you have will need to be have the same thing. We always need one more is going to be called Depot. It can also be Dispatch. Once again, it doesn't really matter as long as you call it something. We do need to give it a name in here, though. We're also going to we'll, we'll call it Dispatch. Let's make it easy to find. And this always needs to be in the first slot of the chest, because if it can't work out where a train is going, it'll use this ticket. Uh, and the idea is we send it back to the Dispatch, or the depot, so it can do it. Uh, so we need to go dispatch slash depot, always your first ticket. Doesn't matter then we put other things as long as they're there. Uh, and you, not every station needs to have every ticket. As long as your main dispatch station has tickets, if a router can't determine where it's going to, it will send it back to the main station to get its stuff. In this case though, I'm going to put them all on here. And I am going to make a copy of this. So, so of course, creative powers of being able to just take a thing, but you do need to make sure you've got all your tickets in there. Once again, it doesn't matter what order is, as long as you've got this first one. And probably any, any common stations, because you don't want to send your trains always back to dispatch. But as long as you've got the common ones in here, so if, for example in our case, the empowered ore probably needs to know about the power station, which is where it's sending its, its oil to. Uh, anything else, it could leave. You don't have to put it in there. Uh, I've written it that way, so if you forget to update a station, it's not a big problem. But we're going to do the same on each of these stations. So, take that out, take that out. Uh, we're going to put down our microcontroller and those and 
those. Head up a wrench, so it's going that way. And this guy's ready. We probably need to turn them on too, actually. Turn it on. Cool. Beep, beep, beep. Means that it has turned on properly. We'll turn this guy here on as well. And we'll do the same over here. Oh, two, three. Take that out. Whoops. Oh. Did I pop? Uh oh. Which chest is which? It's not that one. Let's do that one. There we go. Let's just get rid of those two. Cool. Um, and we've got a map control on top with the track. And we don't really need to have a direction. We do need the detect the track, but we don't need a direction. So we can do that. No problem. Turn it on. Cool. We are ready to go. I just need to double check that I've done this station properly. Yep, that's what I did. Cool. So, if we go over to a dispatch over here. And we just turn a dispatch on. All these routers get broadcast requests on where trains are going. So what's actually just happened is when we started this up, we sent a broadcast request out to all the, the, the routers that 45 is currently doing nothing. So 45 would re be returned back to the station, or back to the depot. Now that it's got a, a destination, let's go turn it on. And you can set it up, of course, that we have a, a location for them all to be stored at. Uh, but this should, hopefully, if we send it on its way. So it doesn't matter which one of these trains it passes over. It's quite slow. It does need to go slow because we need to have enough time to pick this guy up. The code assumes that when it passes through one of these routers, that it's made it to a station and picked something up. It might not be the right station, but it does make the assumption that it's picked something up. Okay, uh, we obviously have decided it's going depot. Which either means we don't have a mid station in there, or it hasn't received an update. Let me just investigate this, because it shouldn't be seeing it to the depot. And I'll be back in a moment. Oh! Okay, that... I think that might be the solution. Right, so it should go around over to here. Of course, it'll fill up the uh, cart. Now, there's nothing in here in the code that says only fill to a certain amount. It'll wait for a full load, or whatever, you, of course, you've configured the uh, loader to do. We could put some magic in there that will detect how many it's loaded, but then you've still got to dispatch you to say, hey, how many was I meant to load? And I thought, well, it's not going to be a big problem if we take a whole carts with items uh, because unless nothing else the other side will be quite happy to receive them and it might just take a little while before we have to do another request so all i've actually done wrong was i had not placed in the capacitor between the microcontroller and the network cable so of course every time the controller saw the engine go past it went oh i don't know who you are uh, I'm going to send you back to the depot or the dispatcher so that you can take and you can actually be correctly routed. Uh, we shouldn't be too far away from leaving now. Yep, just about done. So, and doop. Okay, so hopefully, what will happen now is it'll go through this router here. Set the final, perfect. That'll then send it along here. It'll unload its stuff. Go past here, which will tell the dispatcher that it has arrived at the station. 
because this is course is after the it's dropped off so it will should never be midway because otherwise it's treating this as an it has arrived system but what I'm going to do once this has finished its unloading if, it, if we manage to get it to return to the depot uh, which is what it should do then I'm going to go off and set this up at the various locations and assuming we've still got time we can look at the final piece of the power so I should set it back to the depot cool Okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've set up a server. All the components from the main dispatcher are here, including the hard drive. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert this here. Now, the reason I actually brought you back here is I really I came across here and I went, ah, small problem. We've got cables going everywhere. I can't place something here because they'll join together. I can't place something here because it'll join up there. And of course, I want to be able to see what's going on, and I thought, I'm going to give you a couple of tips on how to use this, which you may not know, uh, and it will be really helpful. So what we're going to do, though, is I'm going to put this guy in here, and we are going to set him to the left side, which will be the green. Now you're probably thinking, but it's on the right. Well, you've got to remember, this is based on the rack facing this way, so it is on the left, uh, because we're going to put this here. Um, and we're going to put a screen into there and a cable there and all of a sudden you'll just notice that it's connected up to there Which means now that both of these sides are connected up, which isn't really what we want uh, Let me just put a keyboard on here as well. Uh, actually no, I won't put a keyboard on just yet What we can do though is we've got dies And you can actually set this guy up here to be red and notice this one's still grey so it connects up But if we made this guy green it no longer connects, just by having a different colour. Isn't that cool? And you can do the same with the screens as well, so we can make that guy green. And this guy could be red. And now we can identify which screen is which. You'll also notice up here, I've added in two more train types, the Logistics Tank 2 and the Logistics Chest 2. And that's configured inside the code, uh, the dispatcher code, but if we turn this guy on, hopefully now it'll boot up. And one of the other things that I probably should show you, if we do a list, you'll see there's this file called .shrc. We go into here, .shrc, and we go slash home, it is normally empty by default. We go dispatcher.lua. So you get the file name, we click reboot. And now what should happen when it's finished booting? It should automatically go in and start doing the dispatching. So we don't have to do anything. If you reboot the machine, it just goes straight in there. But if you want to just control C it for any reason, you can still access all the stuff that's in there. But we're just going to run this like dispatcher. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to head off and set up the other stations. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so we're here at the power station, uh, which is currently semi-disabled. But I thought we might as well use the same building. And you can see that I have put a computer in here. This is just one of the standard uh, stations, which is requesting empowered oil. Uh, you can see I've got a tech access port, which is connected to the transposer, so that we can see what liquid is currently in there, which at the moment there's nothing. Uh, but we're going to grab ourselves a one of these. So we can run this over here. I'm going to, as you can see, I've got a thing all the way up here. No, 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 here. And we'll just run this along the top. And we'll run it around over here. So about, that'll do probably. Grab one of these guys. And these things are really fast at transporting liquid, which is why I've decided to use them. The only problem is that you need quite a bit of room because we need to be able to put the pipe and then one of these. So, should be, yeah, that should be fine. Uh, and I'm actually going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a whole bunch of these along. So we're going to run this all the way down. 
probably like that. Uh, we may not have. Oh no, no, we should be fine. Yep. Run this down here as well. And then run these all the way. I don't know what's happening to those cables. There they are. Still seeing the lag problem. We head down to here. Place that into there. Find ourselves a oil generator to complete the whole setup that we've been working on for the last few episodes. This is going to go into there, one there, one there. Is there enough room to move around? I suppose so. Uh, and we're going to place these all the way up here. Because hopefully we're going to get a lot of power out of this. Especially if we're going to have these, this many oil generators as well. Uh, to there, to there. And we'll grab a ultimate cable from there. And suck the power out of here. And hopefully, while we're doing this, there will be a train collecting empowered oil. Uh, because, of course, we're all connected up and ready to go for the logistics. And once that's done, we'll be making a whole bunch of power. Uh, but what I'll do is I'll wait for the train to come in. And I'll meet you in a second. Okay! So, the whole process works. We now have empowered oil going through here. And we're making just under 5,000 RF per tick. I could easily add some more in there to make more power if we needed to, but 5,000 is actually perfect for the moment. But that's that project finished, and we've got a really cool logistics system which will deliver things from one station to another station, just from having, just by telling it we need items. Isn't that cool? However, I'm gonna end the episode here. If you've enjoyed this episode, please, do leave a comment telling me what you enjoyed. If you knew the channel and like what you saw, like open computers or trains, any of that type of stuff, hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day and see ya!